Virtual reality lets the player interact with the world in a way that was not possible before, but it also has its own limitations, and one of them is interacting with faraway objects. So in today's video, I will show you how to overcome these issues. We learn how to use a ray to grab an object, interact with the UI, or trigger any custom behavior. Welcome back to the part 6 of this tutorial series that will teach you the basic of VR development in Unity using the Unity XR Toolkit. I'm Valem and this channel is all about VR development, so if you don't want to miss the next video, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell. But without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so we are back in our scene. So in the previous episode, we learned how to better trick the grabbing of an object and use an object that we grab like this lightsaber and gun. Now I will show you how to extend this system to be able to grab these objects from a distance. So first, we need to create a ray to interact with these objects. I will right click in the hierarchy, go to XR and select Ray Interactor. As you can see, this is a shortcut that will set up in our hierarchy an empty game object and assign to it an XR controller, an XR Ray Interactor, and for the look of our ray, a line renderer and the XR Interactor line visual. This is exactly the same as the ray that we created for the teleportation in the part 3 of this tutorial series, but in our case, we will use it to not to teleport, but to interact with an object. Okay, so now that we have a ray, we will drag it under the camera offset of our VR rig. Make sure here to reset its position and rotation, and now we can select the control node to be the right hand to make it follow our right hand. Okay, so that was for the ray for right hand. If you prefer, you can only have one main ray, but in my case, I will make one for my left hand also by doing exactly the same thing. So let's create a new ray, drag it as a child of the offset, reset its position and rotation, and set the node to this time the left hand. And to better distinguish the two, I will name the ray interactor for the right hand, right ray interactor, and the left ray, the left ray interactor. Here you go. Now, if I press on play, you can see that we now have two rays that go through our hand and that can interact with the interactable object that we made in our scene. So if I point it on a particular object and if I press on the grip button, you can see that I can grab the object from a distance and this actually works for all of our objects in the scene and with the correct offset that is really nice. But right now you can see that we can also select our teleportation area and use the ray to teleport by pressing on the trigger button, which is not what we want, so let's fix this. Okay, so let's select both our ray interactor. If you remember correctly from the previous episode, all our grab interactable are on a separate layer called grab. So to only interact with this layer, we can go in the raycast mask parameter, First, let's change it to nothing to uncheck everything. And then let's select only the grab layer. Also, while we are at it, I will select the UI layer as I will show you next how to interact with user interface using the same ray. Now, if I press on play, perfect. You can see that we can now only interact with the grabbable object. That's awesome. So now I will take the time to improve a bit the look of our ray. First, I think that for the line, it will be better if we use the dotted line material with the custom shader that we made for our teleportation system, which is a bit more beautiful in my opinion. For this, I will select both our ray, and in the line renderer, let's click on the little dot, search for the dotted line material that we use, and set it for the material of the line. Now finally, in my case, I don't want the ray to appear all the time, I just want the ray to appear when we are colliding with an object. So to do this, I can simply go to the XR Interactor Line Visual script, Click on the invalid color gradient and simply change the alpha value at the start of the curve to zero and do the same for the alpha value at the end of the curve. Now you can also change the color of the valid gradient color, but in my case, I will leave it to white. And now if I press on play, you can see that it is way better. The line is only showing when it collides with an object. And basically that's it. Now we are able to grab objects that are far from us, which is really, really handy to let the player interact more easily and grab objects that are on the ground, for example. But if we compare this distance grab with the direct grab that we used before, 
you can see that two things are different. One, we can still teleport with the object grabbed. And two, our hand doesn't disappear. For the first issue, this is because if you remember correctly, in the previous episode, we removed the teleportation using the interactor events on the XR Direct Interactor component, which you can see here if I click on Show Interactor Event, you can see that when an object is grabbed, the Enable Teleport for the corresponding hand is set to False, and back to True when we release the object. So simply for the distance grab, we can do exactly the same. So I will go in the right ray interactor, go to interactor event inside the XR ray interactor component, create an event on select enter, drag the VR rig game object on this event. And now we can select the locomotion control script that we made and set the enable teleportation value on the corresponding hand. So in this case, it will be the enable right teleport because we are on the right hand and set it to false. Now we can repeat the same process in the select exit and set back the enable right teleport to true. And that was for the right hand. Now you know how it goes. We can do exactly the same for the other hand. Okay, perfect, so that was for the first issue. Now, for making the hand disappear, this will be a bit more problematic, because if you remember for the second part of this tutorial series, the hand are spawned by the XR controller component here on the right and left hand game object. So we cannot use the interactor event as we did before because the end are not in our hierarchy at the moment. So this is my mistake. Looking back at this, I should have done it this way. Instead of letting the XR controller spawn the end themselves, it will be much better to have them already in our scene. So let's go in our XR controller click on the model prefab to locate it on our project folder, and now we can drag it as a child of the right hand. Simply remove it from the model prefab by clicking on the little dot and then on none. And now, as you can see, we already have our hand in our scene. It's much simpler this way. Now we can do exactly the same for the left hand. So locate the hand prefab on our project, drag it as a child of the left hand and remove it from the XR controller component. Okay, and now we can make them disappear simply using, as we've seen before, the interactor event. So for the right direct grab, click on show interactor event, create two new event for select enter and select exit, drag the right hand presents game object, go to game object, set active, Set it to false when select enter and to true when select exit. Perfect. This way, this will make the hand disappear or happier when we grab an object. Now, you know how it goes. We can do this for the left hand. Okay, so that was for the direct grab. We can finally do the same stuff, but for the distance grab, let's click on the right ray interactor interactor event and then exactly the same here create two new events set the right hand to true when grabbing with the right hand right hand to false when releasing and now the same for the left hand and there you go now everything is finished with a little bit more setup and without having to write another line of code we managed to make our distance graph system work the same let's click on play to test our game as you can see, now my hand correctly disappeared when I tried to grab an object. Perfect! Okay, so now that was for grabbing the object, but now I will show you how to use the same ray to interact with the user interface like button, slider, toggle. First, I will create a simple user interface canvas. So in the hierarchy, I will right click, go to UI and click on canvas. So this creates a canvas as expected, but also an event system that you can see here, which will make it possible to interact with the user interface. As you can see, by default, the canvas is set to screen space canvas that you can use to display as an overlay user interface. By the way, when working on a canvas, it's easier to go in 2D mode by clicking here on this little toggle on the top of the thin view. Now I can add some user interface element to this canvas. I can right click on the canvas, go to UI and add a button for example. We can rescale it and position it a bit better. 
And we can do the same for all UI elements like a slider, a toggle, or even maybe a drop down. Obviously, here you can use whatever you need for your game. This is not a tutorial about how to use user interface, but how you can make user interface that would normally only work with a mouse. Click also work for array interaction. Now, as you can see, these UI are showing as overlay on our game, but if I click on play, I can interact with them with the mouse click and we can see them here on the game window, but this UI will not appear in the VR headset. The reason is that the canvas is set to overlay. To change it, we can select our canvas and as you can see, we can change the render mode to either screen space camera and world space. If we select screen space camera and set the target camera to be the camera of our VR rig, you can see that if I click on play, the canvas will be exactly positioned in front of the player eyes. It's in a weird position right now, but I can reduce the playing distance maybe and increase the size of all elements in the canvas to make it look a bit better. And now we have UI following our screen and we can see them in VR. But in my opinion, this is not the best way to use user interface in virtual reality because it's nauseous to have UI that follow your head and it's even hard to read or to interact with them like this. So my advice to you is to make the UI part of your world. And to do this, we can simply change the render mode to world space. Now, by the way, make sure you still have the event camera set to VR rig camera. It will be better for what's coming next. And now we can use the canvas like if it was an element in our scene. So in my case, I will reduce the canvas size to something like 0 0.001 and place it behind the table, just like that. And there you go. Now, if I click on play, you can see that I'm able to see the canvas like if it's in my scene. But as you can see, we are not able to interact with the UI right now. To do so, we simply need to do two things. First, add to our canvas a track device graphic ray caster component. Then on the event system that was automatically added to the scene when we created the canvas, I will replace the basic input module by XR UI input module. And now if I click on play, you can see that I'm able to interact with UI with the trigger button. That's awesome. And basically that's it. We can now interact with UI to trigger any behavior that we want. So for example, I can control the game settings like the audio, or I can load another theme with the UI and I can trigger this using simply this ray. Awesome. But as you can see, we have a little issue at the moment when the ray interact with the user interface and that we try to remove the ray, it gets stuck to the side and doesn't update. And I can tell you how many hours I spent trying to solve these issues to simply find out that this could simply be fixed like this. Just go in the main camera of our VR rig and set the VR camera tag to main camera. And now if I click on play, you can see that the ray gets correctly updated and doesn't get stuck on the side. Perfect. But we are not done with our ray setup because we have another issue to fix. And really this is a great example because that shows how that the bigger a project gets, the harder it is to have everything work properly because of the behavior interacting with each other. And in our case, we still have the teleportation ray that shows when selecting a UI, which can make you teleport when clicking on a button, for example. So we need to remove teleportation when the interaction ray is hovering on a valid object. So the easiest method to do this is to actually do it inside the locomotion controller script that we made in the teleportation tutorial. So let's select our VR rig and double click on the locomotion controller script to open it. Now in this script, I need to disable teleportation if we over something with our ray. So I will create two more public variables of type XR ray interactor, one called left interactor ray and the other one right interactor ray. And now in this script, I will check that the ray are not overing over anything if we want to teleport. And for this, I will go in the update function. I will create a vector3 variable called pose, initialize it with new vector3, do the same with another vector3 variable called norm, 
now an int variable called index set initially to zero, and finally a boolean variable called valid target equals false. So don't stress over these variables. These are not really important, and I simply need them for calling a function that will tell us if we are overing something. So here for the left teleport ray, I can create a new boolean variable called is left interactor ray overing, and we can check if it's overing by calling the function try get hit info with the variable we just made. So try get hit info, ref pose, ref norm, ref index, ref valid target. And here the ref tag before calling the variable means that these variables will be changed inside the function and I can use them afterward to get the information about what we hit with our array. But in our case, we don't need all of these elements, we just need to know if we hit something or not, which will be the case when this whole function returns true. Okay, perfect, and now finally, I can check that we are not overing by adding and not is left interactor array overing, perfect. And there you go, our job is done. Now we can do exactly the same, but this time for the right array interactor. Okay, so our script is finished. We have made sure that both the left ray and the right ray are not overing if we want to teleport. So let's go back to Unity and set the variable for the ray. Okay, back to Unity. Now I simply need to drag the left ray interactor as the left ray interactor variable and the right ray interactor as the right ray interactor variable. Now everything is ready. Let's click on play to test our game. And there you go, everything is working well. I can grab an object, I can interact with user interface, and when I'm not using a ray, I can teleport on the teleport area, everything is working well, and our setup is good. Great job, guys. So, I think that we learned a lot in this video, but I get that some of you want to know how to use the ray to trigger anything and not just grab or interact with a user interface. So, let me show you quickly how to interact with any object with this ray and you will see it's really, really, really easy. So, for example, I will create a little cube and place it next to the table. Now, imagine that I want to interact with this ray and trigger a custom behavior on the cube. To do it, we simply need to add a Nixar simple interactable script on this game object. And now, as you can see, this component will let you interact with the cube using the ray like before. But this time, we are not forced to grab the cube. And we can use the little event over here as before to trigger anything. So, for example, let's create a new event when overing the cube. And in this case, I will go in the mesh renderer and change the material of the cube to a material, let's say the red material that I have here on my project. And now, same stuff, when the over exit, I can reset the cube material to the default one that it currently has. Now, last but not least, don't forget to set as before the layer of this cube to something that can be interacted with the ray, so the grab layer, for example. And now, if I click on play, you can see that the color of the cube changes correctly. That's perfect. And there you have it, guys. That is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I hope that you learned something new. As always, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment below what you would like to see next. If you want to have access to the source project of all of my tutorials, get exclusive content and support the channel, come check out my Patreon. And on that matter, a big big thank you to the new Patreon that joined lately, their name will appear on the screen right now. Anyway, have a nice day guys, and see you soon.